Well, welcome to Lip Reading. This is our second session in our series of Introduction to Basic Lip Reading by George Valenta. Thank you for coming. Some of you may have already seen our first lip reading session. And uh, so welcome back. For those of you for whom this is the first time, don't worry about it. You can always go back and look at the first one whenever you're ready. Today, we're going to concentrate on numbers. Numbers are important for telling time, for money, for the date, for the, your appointment. So let's just warm up by counting numbers. So here we go. Now, I'm going to try to count silently. And I want you, while that's happening, to duplicate what you see the movements are in my mouth and lips and tongue and teeth and feel those movements. And of course, if you talk out loud, well, then you'll hear them. But you're, I'm going to try not to have you hear me so that you're concentrating on the lip reading. Are you ready? Counting. All right, we got up to 21. All right, still warming up. Those are very important numbers for us. Let's count by twos. And we'll start with 20, counting by twos. Once again, I'm going to try to make it easier for you. When we count, when we talk, when we communicate, we usually look one another in the eye. I'm going to put these little glasses on so that I'm eliminating that thing. And you will uh, really be able to focus completely on my lips. We're counting by two, starting with 20. Ready? Take a nice deep breath. Tell yourself this is interesting. Well, how about that? Okay, did you get up to 40? Are you feeling what your jaw is doing? Are you observing what I'm doing? Are you, if you're counting out loud, that's okay. But lip reading here for us is going to be the artificial situation when I'm not going to be talking out loud. All right, let's do one more warm up. Let's count from 40 by fives up to whatever. Ah, take another nice breath. Are you ready? Counting by fives. That's enough, right? That's enough warm up. Now, since this is a beginning introductory class, um, and some of you may have never done lip reading or tried lip reading before, I'd like you to not be hard on yourself. Have an expectation of getting things 50% of the time, better than 50% is good. All right. Here's the program. Here's the way we're going to set up the, uh, the protocol. I'm going to say things silently three times. 
then I'm going to say it out loud once, and then I'm going to repeat it silently three times. Oh, no, twice. Three, one, and two. Okay? Because I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to tire you out. Now, we know that we're working on numbers, all right? So one of the things we need to use numbers for is telling time, telling the date. So let's talk about a day, okay? So let's watch what I'm going to say. Now, it doesn't matter if you got all of that. If you, if you missed some part, just move on. Don't, don't beat yourself up because you missed some part, because I'm going to say the same thing again. Did you get today is March 5th, 2022? That's what I said. All right. Let's move on to the next thing. This is like about identification. Oh boy, I'm going to repeat that for sure. Did you get, my birthday is on my driver's license? Let's repeat that. Now knowing how you're recording how you feel, how you see, and of course, possibly your own voice if you're saying it out loud. It doesn't matter. Better if you say it out loud, I have to do it silently. And here's something that we talk about when we have birthdays. What is your zodiac sign? And a question that often gets asked. How old are you? I said, okay, it's, you can see the O, but K is hard to see. Okay. You see how it's in the back of my mouth, O is on my lips, but K sound and G sound are in the back of my throat. So uh, don't be surprised if you wonder what that movement was. Let's do a very important number.
I said social number. Most people don't say social security number. They say my social is. So my social number is three, two, one, four, five. Are these numbers getting easier for you? Nine, eight, seven. I hope this practice makes you feel more comfortable with the first few numbers. Ready? Did you notice that that really isn't a social number? Well, first of all, it's not really mine, that I only had three numbers, two numbers, and three numbers. I should have had four numbers at the end, shouldn't I? Did that bother you? Don't let things bother you. Take another nice deep breath and say, "Uh aha, he's trying to trick me. Well, he's not trying to trick you. I just hope all is well. Now, let's talk about some more numbers. I'm going to ask you a question. What time is it? Okay, notice that time and dime both look the same. So having a little bit of hearing, you can hear the duh in dime, but the t in time is quiet. So that's where our hearing will come in handy when we're actually in a true communication uh, position. So let's answer that question. It's one thirty six. Here's another question, but it's not uh, with numbers in it. It's just about time. When? Come. Come. Did you see those K sounds? Can you come? When can you come? Those K's are not on my lips, but there there's a moment, a little second when we say them. So the question was. And here's the answer. Maybe tomorrow. Did you get that? Maybe tomorrow. Okay. And we're still asking about this appointment we're making. Maybe tomorrow, yeah, well. Well, let's talk about money and pricing things, okay? Some of the terms we use are ones for dollars. We have single dollar bills, paper money, but we also have coins like pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. So how do those look? I hope you got that paper money. Single, 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 single like a single One dollar bill. Pennies. 
penny, nickel, dime, quarter. Okay, so those are some of the terms that we'll be using. Um, let's pretend we're going to a store, all right? And so you might ask the salesperson, how much is that shirt? $39. Wow, that's a lot. Way too much, way too much. All right, and some more money matters here. Will you lend me 10 bucks? And we've got that K sound in bucks, don't we? Which is with the back of my mouth that you can't always really see. Well, then, how about five? Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, moving on with more numbers. Now we're gonna have some words with K sounds in them, but they're so important. I'm going to say it first. My credit card number. Okay, now let's drill that. My credit card number is Now, realize these are things that you would be saying, and the Kai would say, tell me your credit card number. It doesn't matter exactly what we're doing, drilling, as long as it's going to be, uh, be able to be used. So, my I'm going to repeat those numbers. No, either you got some of them or you didn't. Let me say them out loud. Did you get two, four, eight, zero? Ah, uh, we haven't drilled zero, have we? One, one, four, nine, seven, four, three, eight. And let's do them silently again.
And suppose you're in a restaurant and the bill comes and you say, It's my treat. Let me pay. Actually, I said, let me pay. People don't usually like let me pay would be if you're being possessive here, but let me. Okay, let's split the bill. Now, once again, this is a question you would ask someone in a business. And there'll be a very operative word with a K sound in it. You should be able to get it. Big question. How much would it be to rent a car for a week? Just a small one. And here's something else that you might be talking about. Uh, there's going to be a tricky word in there, tickets. Okay? So because Ks are so difficult, I'm going to tell you that it's about tickets. Okay? Those theater tickets were $79 each. So I had to pay $316 for four of them. I think the last time I said, I said for four of them. And that's, people will shorten words like that. So let's drill that. They're pretty good seats. Right? Let's talk about amounts, okay? Um, <clears throat> there's uh, the last word in this phrase that we're going to be saying has a k sound in it, okay? so. Don't be surprised if you have to think about it for a minute. I'm 
I like two teaspoons of sugar in my coffee. Now, if you're getting half of this, good. That's our expectation. When you miss a word, just let it go. Get what's right there at the moment. Don't, when it's gone, it's gone. You stick with the present thing that's being said. So let's drill that for just a couple times. How about you? Take a nice deep breath. There's the word take in there, isn't there? Sometimes I take tea instead. Here we go with more numbers, okay? I'm going to uh, drill something that you would say to someone. Tell me your phone number again, please. Seven three four two nine two six six eight six. Now, some people aren't going to say phone numbers that way. They're going to say nine sixty six six. Did you hear how they combine things? I'm going to say that the way some people like to say dates of the month or the week and um, telephone numbers, 734-292-6686. Now let's see how that looks instead of one at a time. And here's a, uh, someone, this could be when you're giving your phone number to someone and they could ask you, what's that area code again? There's that K sound in code, okay? Sometimes I'll alert you. Sometimes I'll let you just see if you can figure it out for the practice. Do you have a cell phone? Oh, thanks. I got it.
oh, take, <laughs> are we having fun yet? Okay. It takes some time and lots of practice to do lip reading. And even though we've been confining ourselves to numbers and things associated with numbers, we're still doing good lip reading practice. So now let's talk about the U.S. Post Office mail, okay? Okay. Here's a question that someone might ask you. Do we have the same zip code? You see, this re repetition in practice gets you seeing and feeling these movements. And um, I'll have a suggestion or two about how to continue this practice. But for right now, um, we're talking about zip code. Mine is 48189. What's yours? I don't think people would say 48189. Ah, they might. Mine is 48189. You have to be prepared for whatever anyone is saying to you. So I'm trying to throw in, not to trick, but just to broaden our horizons. So we're still talking about zip codes. And we've discovered, well, what did we discover? Uh, I asked what your zip code was. Oh, yeah, great. They're the same. There's that G sound at the back of my throat. So if you miss great, it doesn't, it's not a, it's just a word. Don't worry about it. Just go on to, they're the same. Oh, great. They're the same. And while we're still talking about, the U.S. Mail Postal Service. My address is 2200 Maple Lane. Take a nice deep breath. Apartment 315.
I don't think people would say apartment 315 somehow, but in case they didn't hear it right, then instead of saying 315, because you had to repeat it, you'd say 315, okay? Now we're talking about where I live. There's no elevator. Did you get that K in walk? You have to walk up. You have. It's not so bad. And then using some bigger numbers, maybe, you oh, might ask this question. Did you get that last word? Book with a K at the end? How many pages are in that book? Six hundred. Who wrote it? All right. And once again, numbers are important for money, addresses, dates, times, and a few of the other areas that we touched, like credit cards and zip codes and area codes. How about one more topic? Cooking. Oh boy, there's a word with two Ks in it. Cooking. Cooking. Now, there's calls for and cups, okay? Part of that question, a uh, statement. The recipe calls for two cups of flour. Lots of K's in there. I hope I haven't tired you out with all those K's because we're almost to the end of this little session. And the final ingredient in what we're making
there is also one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. Wow, we never did get to fractions, did we? Except right now with one fourth. I hope that you have, uh, I haven't tired you out too much with all this drilling and practice on numbers. Um, if you have not seen the first program in this series of Introduction to Basic Lip Reading, by all means, review it, give yourself a day or two and review this program. And sometimes I have my, um, I'm almost deaf, you know, I'm 89 years old and really in bad hearing shape. Um, I turn off the audio on my TV set and I use, because it would be so loud, it's obtrusive, and I put earphones on. And so if I take my earphones off, I get to lip read like the stuff they say on, on Wheel of Fortune. They're always buying a vowel or can I have this or they're guessing. Um, sometimes watching Wheel of Fortune with the sound turned way down is lip reading practice. So you can also find other programs on uh, YouTube and just in Google. So I wish you namaste. I wish you good luck. It takes a lot of practice to do lip reading adequately. So don't be discouraged. Some people are natural lip readers like my sister. She's been able to read lip reading since she, lips since she was 10 years old. I have to work at it and I hope I've helped you work at it too. Bye-bye for now.